Hi, this is David Hine of Aspect Art. We're out in front of the Kunz Hall in Rotterdam. With us today is Wim Pipus, the curator of the Isaac Israel Show. Isaac Israel is primarily known as Holland's Impressionist painter. He was an associate of Breitner early, more or less went his own way after that. A world traveler, painted in many locales, many exotic places. This exhibit pretty much sums up his life and goes through a lot of those places and includes a lot of drawings and aquarelles. So join us now for Isaac Israels in the Kunsthal. Vim, uh, another very popular show you have here, uh, people everywhere. Uh, when we did the pan not long ago, everybody had an Isaac Israels on display. Seems his uh, star is once again rising. How is it uh, that there is so much interest in him again? Uh, well, that has to do with a general interest uh, on well art around 1900. So uh, all those impressionist and post-impressionist painters are well, they are in at the moment, and uh, yeah, Isaac Israels is one of them. And you, you have a show as well as the Curly Mueller, and later in uh, next month, uh, uh, Israel's father is yeah. opening in the Jewish Museum. Um, some have described Israels as uh, Holland's greatest impressionist painter. How would you say? Yeah, well, Isaac Israels, I, I don't know if he's really the greatest, but he's one of the most important, uh, together with, with Willem Witsen or Breitner. He is, well, the leading impressionist painter of, uh, of the Netherlands, and uh, for that reason we made a huge uh, retrospective on him. Now, in the first room, because the show is, in fact, hung chronological with his development, mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of the paintings resemble Breitner's work. Uh, did they work together? Yeah, in the, in the beginning they, they worked together in Amsterdam. You can see it, you can very closely uh, see the, the influences from Breitner on Israels and Israels on Breitner. They work together, they share the same house and uh, they share the same models, and, uh, but suddenly it came to a fight and then they had both uh, their own way. But uh, in the beginning they were, well, brothers in art, so to say. Now, as we walk through the exhibit, we come to an, uh, a time when his palette begins to lighten up. Did he go away from Holland, or what was his influence? Yeah, he was really a traveling artist. In a way, he had, uh, well, he was a son of rich uh, parents. The, the, his father was uh, Joseph Israels, the well-paid and well, yeah, f the famous uh, Joseph Israels in, in those days. And uh, Isaac, uh, yeah, n never had to worry about money. I mean, he, he could travel and go where he liked. So he went to London and Paris and uh, even the Dutch East Indies and Switzerland and Italy and, uh, yeah, had studios in different cities. So he traveled a lot and uh, you can see all those influences from the different countries in his work. Now there was a period in the, in the teens and then into the 20s where exotic people and exotic uh, paint. Do we have some of that in the show? Yeah, he was, uh, like many other artists, uh, working in the Circus Medrano at the same time as Picasso was there or Kees Max or other uh, artists. And uh, he always had a, um, a kind of favor for, for artists uh, from the Revue, uh, people in bars, Café Chantants, uh, well, the circus, of course. Uh, 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 famous actresses, uh, a very famous portrait by uh, Matahari is uh, made by Israels and uh, yeah, he loved this, this, uh, this theater and show people. When we look at his East Indian paintings, were they all made in Java or wherever or did some of them, were they painted here? Now you can, his, his Indies, his, his orientalistic or exotic work you can divide in two parts. One is made in Europe, in Holland, 
students from, from Java came to The Hague or Amsterdam to study, princes or other uh, royal family people, and uh, Israels made paintings from those people in, in the Netherlands. And in the 20s he went to Java and Bali and went uh, painting over there in the sun and was doing portraits and few landscapes and uh, while well, he was sitting in the open air. So that's a different kind of work, uh, but also orientalistic. When his palette began to lighten up and uh, he came back to Holland, was his style still to be described as impressionist? Um, yeah, you might say so. He, he was, I mean, he is a very uh, impressionist uh, all through his whole career. He started as an impressionist and ended up as an impressionist. Although there are little, very little uh, uh, developments in his work. His palette is, is becoming lighter at the end. But uh, it's, it's still the same artist. You can see a very strong hand, uh, and that's typical for Israels. Now, I noticed in the exhibit there are a relatively few number of nudes. In fact, I only saw one and then mm. some drawings. Was this not part of his subject matter? Uh, well, there are about, I've seen about five or six or so, and we selected uh, two, and one is uh, <laughs> kept out of the exhibition. I found it not that good painting. So there's hanging actually one nude. Uh, yeah, most, most of the paintings he made were uh, portraits, people, very few still lifes, uh, no, no, uh, no landscapes, I don't have any landscapes, but uh, he made a lot of uh, cityscapes, so uh, uh, impressions from cities, from London, The Hague, Amsterdam, uh, Paris of course, um, those were favorable uh, subjects. But uh, nudes or pure still lifes or all landscapes is not so, no, that is not uh, Israel's. Portraits he loved, people he loved, and uh, yeah, that's his main uh, work. Now we know he came from a, a famous painting family, as you said. Uh, was he influenced by his father and or other people? Um, well, he was influenced by his father in a way that he came from an artistic uh, milieu, so to say. So he was very young already, uh, acquainted with, with, uh, with paint, with, with artistic people, with literature, with, with, uh, with uh, people who could think free and, and work as an artist. But uh, the style of his father is completely different than, uh, than his son. I mean, his father, Joseph Israels, was really working in the 19th century tradition of, of the Hague School. And uh, Isaac Israels was more colorful, was really impressionist and was really a son uh, and a different generation. And you can see it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, two types of works. It's completely different from each other. Although they respected each other. I mean, uh, Josef Israels respected the work of his son and, other, and, and vice versa. I've noticed that in your show you've included a lot of um, drawings and sketchbooks and some watercolors. Could you tell me uh, how did Israels uh, rate as a, as a drawer? Well, actually, I regard Israel as a, as a drawer and not as a painter. Well, he's a painter, of course, but he paints as a drawer. Very quick, very fast. Uh, watercolors, you can see that even better. He, is, he has a very fast uh, technique. And so we included uh, many sketchbooks. Uh, there are about 400 in total, divided on many collections in the Netherlands. And we made a, a huge choice of about uh, 50 books and uh, several drawings. Now, one question about, how, you're a private enterprise, and when you make a show like this, how do you go about collecting uh, the various components for it? Um, well, we start with, with the major pieces, mostly in museums, but in this case, uh, some very important private collections. They have uh, beautiful Israels. So you start with, with the key works, and then you yeah, start collecting and making an ideal uh, wish list and we make uh, about a list for, let's say, 80 pieces in total, the paintings. And then uh, if we have that, then we can really start and, and make it a fine uh, combination and a fine installation. And uh, then we yeah, look for some special things, in this case, uh, the sketchbooks. Wim, could you tell us uh, how long will your show be on and when can the people come and see it? Yeah, it's open daily, Tuesday till uh, Saturday from 10 till 5, Sundays. 11 till 5 and it's on till the 9th of January in the year 2000. 
Pim, thank you very much for another great show. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you.